I had a friend, Nick Rockefeller, okay, who was one of the Rockefeller family, and uh, we became friends. We started talking about things. I learned an awful lot from Mr. Rockefeller. And one of the things that we used to talk about was the ultimate plan of the banking industry, what they wanted to accomplish. So uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so not, instead of having cash, anytime you have money in your, in, your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what everything. You sell. Everything is in there, you know? And so they, they want a one world government controlled by them, everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips and they control people. And you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal, that's their intentions. Hi, I'm Bill Bonner. I'm recording this for you in Paris, France. Besides, I'm actually here doing some research of my own. I'm scowling around as your eyes and ears, trying to figure out what's going on. It seems like the world of money is becoming more and more difficult and dangerous. I've had several bank accounts in Europe for many years. We have offices in France, Ireland, Switzerland, and Britain. There's no way to avoid banking in these countries, too. But last month, I got notices from two banks telling me that they could no longer do business with me. And I'm not the only one. I've heard from friends here in Paris that their banks, too, have rejected them. One of them went to an ATM machine and found he couldn't get out any money. His account had been frozen. Then he got a letter from the bank telling him that it could no longer carry his account because it was not able to comply with U.S. regulations. This is becoming a big issue. Access to money 
even our own money, is being restricted in many ways. Right now, these regulations, these restrictions, are mostly appearing overseas, but they're arising at home too. Cash is becoming hard to get and hard to hold. And just because you have it in the bank doesn't mean you'll have it when and where you need it. FATCA rules are supposed to be fully operational this fall. So foreign banks are scrambling to get rid of U.S. customers. My bank told me that it wasn't a tax issue, it was an SEC issue. I was told that the bank could not deal with American account holders because it was afraid of being sued under SEC rules. A similar thing happened to a friend in Argentina, but he had a worse time. Because when you travel to a place like Argentina, you take cash. That is partly because you can't trust the banking system to deliver cash to you when you need it. And it's partly because there, people want cash, especially dollar cash. So he took out $10,000 from his bank in the U.S. to take to Argentina, and his bank, Citibank, reported him to the feds, and it closed his account. Even more remarkable, he had been a customer of the bank for 40 years. So he was outraged, and he went to a lawyer, but his lawyer told him to forget it. The lawyer said, stuff like that is happening. Well, what I'm trying to figure out is what stuff is happening and why. FATCA, SEC, anti-money laundering, anti-terrorist rules, all of these things are reducing your ability to get access to your money when and how you want it. And this is becoming a big and important theme with me and the rest of the BFO team because we believe the world is headed for a crisis, another financial crisis like the one in 2008, but worse. Why worse? Because there's a lot more credit in the world than there was then. When the last crisis hit, the world's governments and central banks could only think of one thing to do about it, give the world more of what it needed least, more debt. And now, McKinsey, the international consulting group, put the amount of additional debt at 57 trillion, in short, 57 trillion more than in 2007. So there's a lot more debt around, and a lot of this debt is government debt. And a lot of the governments who are deeply in debt are very unlikely ever to pay it back. We all know that Greece is scheduled to default, but there are a lot of other countries that will probably default too, including Argentina. Now you wouldn't have thought it possible for Argentina to default, because who would lend money to Argentina? the country was responsible for the biggest sovereign debt default of all time, and that was just 12 years ago. And the case, by the way, is still in the courts because hedge funds have refused to take the haircut that Argentina offered them. Now, how was Argentina able to borrow? The zero interest rate policies of most central banks meant that savers and investors couldn't earn any yield. So when Argentina came along and offered a yield of 8%, it was just too good for many of them to resist. Argentina was able to borrow. And now, when the credit cycle turns and credit becomes harder to get, Argentina and a lot of other countries will not be able to refinance their debt. They will have to default. And these sovereign bonds, now are the backbone of the entire world banking system because the regulations put into effect after the crisis, which were intended to strengthen the banking system, actually forced the banks to buy government bonds. After all, they were supposed to be the safest credits in the world. And when the government bonds go bad, as they will, the whole banking system will be bankrupt. And that will mean that the credit system operated by the banks will cease to function. This is when having access to your money will really matter. It will be vital. You'll go to your ATM machine and you may find your account frozen. And it's possible that all accounts will be frozen because the banks won't have the cash. First, the banking sector itself will be bankrupt and second, there isn't that much cash in the entire world. 
Since people began using credit cards, credit generally, to finance their lives and their businesses, cash has gradually become less important. At least it is to me. I've seen this in my own life. I now leave on a world trip with only a few dollars in my pocket, unless I'm going to Argentina, because I know I can pay for things with a credit card, and almost everywhere I go, I can get cash from an ATM. But more and more, we're finding that we can't get the money we want when we need it. Now, most of these things now are just a nuisance when our banks close and send us letters. We have paperwork to do. We switch banks. We reorganize ourselves in different ways. But soon, it could be a much more important matter. Thank you. In those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any so not, instead of having cash, anytime you have money in your in your in your chip. They can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip, and you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do. What everything. You everything is in there. You know. And so they, they want a one-world government, controlled by them, everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips, and they control people, and you become a slave, you become a serf to these people. That's their goal, that's their intentions.